So it didn't turn out to be as easy as we thought to reproduce this bread. But uh, here we are, we got some flour and we got some buckwheat flour, which was the flour that they use all the time, it was more ready available. So we're gonna got a kilo of that, so like two pounds. And uh, we prepare a fountain. And here we got a little bit of the, as we call it in Italy, mada or biga or, you know, because obviously they didn't have yeast as such, but they would use like a sourdough, as we call it now, okay? It's lovely smell of acidity. And it's coming up. There you go. And then here I got a little bit of water. It's got a bit of salt in it. And I'm going to gently with my hands. Apparently they were using as well some kind of different animals to move around different machines that mix the bread. But obviously being wood, nothing was left over from it. Slowly I put it all in. Now I go in the middle. Again. Okay, I'm going to work it really gently, yeah, and try to allow it to turn always a little bit of air so it gets trapped in there so it makes it nice and lighter as you can see it's a very straightforward door and very well stratified and really really nice so i'm going to shape it down like that and I'm ready to go. And then we're gonna press it out. Okay, so here I got the right shape, sides, and uh, the only thing I had to let it raise for a minute, I think one hour and a half to two hours would be more than enough in the temperate room. There we are, got one, one hour and a half, two hours, and it gets much softer. And you know, this is where I start to have a problem because in a normal situation, I would bake this one and it would become a beautiful, I can make little cuts to make it a little bit more. But here on the picture that I got here, the bread is divided like if it was, it was like a, a token, like it's, it's almost like somebody gets paid one piece of that. So, and there is this sort of like line around which I cannot justify myself. I, at the start, I thought it was baked upside down or something like that. But obviously it's not because otherwise they would have found the tin in the oven. So the only thing that I sort of fold about it, it could be then, in order to make it easy to carry, they would have baked it with a piece of string around it. And I'll show you what I told. So I'll put the string, as I'm going, I'll fix it in. This also will guarantee the fact that each of the piece of bread will be roughly the same size, because the string will be the same size. Okay, here we are, I'm gonna pull it. And that's it, I'm happy with that. Okay, now, shaping is perfect. I'm going to make the cuts. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna divide it in eight, one. Oops. One. and eight. Eight of these lovely little cap will allow the heat to come up, will allow the thing to raise. But then, as we can see in the picture, each of the slaves had his own little mark. So we make, we made a little Locanda Locatelli sort of double L, which you're gonna place here. 
like that, like in our logo, and then a little weight on top of that. Now, I will double this up like that, and when the bread is ready, I can actually carry through this tray. So, I'm ready to bake it now. Okay, we're gonna take away our LL. And this is who make it for a fantastic loaf of bread from Pompeii. 